Welcome on in, everyone, to the top four of the Part the Mist Fail season of the Clash Bash. Today, we have somebody who I commentated a game of prior, Dat Wheezy, going against Theo Lowe. Theo running the Ira build that has been terrorizing the format as of right now, and Dat Wheezy over on the Shiana build. We're going to go ahead and get into this game one and see exactly who takes the first round into this best of three match for the top four of Part the Mistvale Clash Bash. Alrighty, and here we are. It is game one. Theo Lowe on Ira down here, and then Dat Wheezy on Shiana. Now, Ira's been a pretty big contender for this game for quite some time. We know Ira is really, really good in commoner, and she's just as effective here in Clash. But luckily, we do have some fun stuff with Shiana, a opponent that Ira will never get to face in commoner, and see exactly what the wonderful Diamond Gemini can pull into this hero. So Ira's whole plan looks like, you know, they're running that kitty build with a heart and cross strap. And the heart and cross strap is really going to help with some of that disruption going into your, you know, chain enders. And most of it is just going to be a simple attack, Kadachi Kadachi or Kadachi Kadachi attack. That's kind of Ira's big thing. She gets to defend with a lot of awesome cards like Flick Flax or any other defense reactions, as well as blocking with any three power blue blocks that are in her deck, too. Uh, those blues also tend to pitch and cost zero. And when they do that, you're able to play both your Kadachis with go again. So pretty easy tech there. But only one damage coming off of Ira here on that first turn gets a little bit of damage through. But we know that Dat Weezy's Shiana is very, very much so a go tall build. We like to see a lot of this in regards to any disruptive effects. Now, Endless Winter, while being an incredibly powerful card in a go tall Shiana build, uh, there isn't a whole lot of real terror behind it because it doesn't get that ice fuse. It being fused as an ice card really, really makes it harder for you to defend against it and also take any damage from it. But in these specific scenarios, it just kind of is nothing for Ira. Ira can comfortably block out that eight. So there's no dominate or overpower or anything. And then they get to come in with a simple... Kadachi Kadachi attack, right? That is that is the purpose of this build is just to kind of keep on chipping away at their opponent's health while you're able to defend efficiently. And hopefully we can see some wonderful disruption on Shiana's end to allow for those smaller chain links on Iris side. But as long as Iris is able to keep a blue that costs zero, you're pretty much able to make anything happen in this deck. Uh, so you see a collapsing trap go on there. That collapsing trap does trigger a lot, making that uh, torrent of tempo in Ira's hand go away because they have to discard and then draw one minus one. So they don't draw anything there. It's a simple, simple Kadachi, Kadachi, Fluster Fist Blue, and just moving on from there. So still some damage being chipped away over on Ira's side. Ira's still not taking any damage yet, but. Here comes a golden sun for the simple cost of three pieces of equipment and a blue pitch from hand. This is a 12 power golden sun, which is it's a lot of damage. But honestly, Ira just pulled really, really well here with also having something like a flick flag. This is a further example as to why dominate is a significantly better keyword for these go tall builds than something like overpower. But. The, you know, Shiana was able to get a decent amount of damage off on to Ira. So now the, you know, life totals are a little bit more polarizing or they're a little bit more connected, I should say. But Ira still gets to just keep doing their thing, right? Kadachi, Kadachi, play a leg tap. And they also have the benefit of having that free two block off of their tearing Shuko and Pouncing Paws. And they have to also remember, at least Shiana has to remember that, the Tearing Shuko and Pouncing Paws is another two cost to go again attack that Ira can just make at any point. So it is really important to make sure that you're not utilizing too many resources and letting these chains go too far, because honestly, you also have Mask of the Three Tails. Mask of Three Tails is just like Mask of Momentum. After you've hit three times, 
Uh, it doesn't even have to be in a row. As long as you've hit three times, you can utilize Mask and draw a card. Now, an all red hand here for Ira. So unfortunately, we're not going to see many Kadachis coming through here, but we are seeing a Torrent of Tempo and a Plunder Run. Plunder Run being a pretty good tech into this deck. Um, you know, you get to go ahead and put that in Arsenal, power up your next big attack, give it that go again, and it ends up being really, really nice. Uh, or not go again. You end up uh, getting to draw a card off of it. So Shiana goes ahead and just plays a Teclo Core on their turn, just kind of setting up for the next turn in case they have to block out a big attack. They block out this Torrent of Tempo, no attack reactions on Ira's side. So turn just goes and ends. Plunder Run's probably going to go in Arsenal for sure. So there goes Plunder Run. Another hand of all reds. Two cut down to size, a Bittering Thorns, and a Razor Reflex. But here comes a Shakedown for six. Now, in order to get Shakedown's ability, you do need to attack react. So one can assume that there is something like a pummel or an up the ante in Shiana's hand to block this out efficiently. Yep. So there comes a blue pummel, just enough to get over. And that pummel is going to discard the last card in the hand. And therefore, the shakedown effect does not really matter at all. So kind of just pass it and moving on over. We're kind of chipping away. Some more life is getting lost over on Ira's end, and Shiana is able to just keep putting on the disruptive pressure of these go tall decks into these. Speaking of Crippling Crush, this is a sweet 11 power card. So 11 power gets you a lot, but you have to block. You have, if you take four or more, you get the Crippling Crush effect. A lot of the stuff in the hand of Ira doesn't really block very well, and frankly, you're going to have to try and just prevent as much damage as possible here. So Crippling Crush comes in. They play that Sigil of Solace. They go ahead and gain some life, but they still lose that card in their hand, and it's just a simple pass. They have to get something that is not an all red hand. Here they're looking a little bit better. There's that Pouncing Key, a zero cost blue card that will allow them to at least turn their Kadachis on. But here comes an Endless Winter again. Now, Endless Winter, again, if it's Ice Fuse, it gets, you know, anytime you block with a card from your hand, um, you get a Frostbite token uh, underneath it for every card that blocks this. But if it hits, you end up getting a, um, a, a Frostbite for every action you play, essentially. So it is very, very detrimental to the playstyle of Ira to get hit with something like an Endless Winter, but... Ira's got a pretty solid thing. Even if just keeping the pouncing key in hand is what they want, or keeping the, the snatch and the razor reflex, it's pretty good. Ira goes down to four, so it's looking pretty good. Just a nice dominate effect on Shiana's end could easily win this game. But here comes a snatch for seven with the plunder run. So we're looking to get two card draws off of this, if I recall correctly. And snatch is not going to have go again there's no way to give it go again outside of the razor reflex in the hand so we're going to see whether or not that ends up happening it does get reflexed so now it's coming in for 10 and go again but there's the buzzsaw trap buzzsaw trap is going to reduce that power back down to its base and not allow it to gain any power very very good trick of shiana's sleeve there that buzzsaw trap was insane that was the time to play it for sure so simple move. Shiana just gets to go ahead and go, hey, I'm going to come in with more big disruptive stuff. This big bet's going to come in. It's going to be wagered, but you don't get to utilize the Betsy wager mechanic of paying one to give this overpower. So unfortunately, you are going to have to, uh, you know, if, if it gets fully blocked out, you're going to end up seeing Ira with a whole bunch of stuff here. And that is exactly what's going to happen. It is going to be a full block. There's no resources for any attack reacts on Shiana's side. And now Ira just gets awesome stuff here. Now, the good news is, is that a Vigor token for Ira means that she can't play Kadachis to start, um, which is really, really good because you can't start with Kadachi because there has to be a zero cost in the pitch zone in order for the Kadachis to get go again. So here it looks like we just have a heart and cross trap, pop it to swing in with Humble, and then you're going to arsenal that plunder run. There's two star strikes getting blocked out there. If Humble hits, though, Shiana's not going to be able to utilize any kind of hero abilities or hero card texts. Uh, so it's going to get completely blocked out. And then, of course, with the unity trigger on Starstruck, Shiana's going to go ahead and get two seismic surges, making guardian attack actions cost two less. 
resources this turn. But Gianna's got nothing. We're going to go ahead and just pop up an E-Pot and get ready for the next turn. Hope that Ira doesn't have 15 damage in their hand and kind of make these moves from here. It's interesting to see an even bigger than that in the Ira build. I'm curious how that's worked out for Theo here. Uh, but regardless, it is a zero cost blue card. So it's probably just Kadachi fodder that sometimes works. But we've started off with a plunder run. Plunder run is going to be pretty good here. But you need to make sure that you're going to give it to an attack action that is going to be worth the time because right now rushing river is pretty much the only thing you got and you're not going to be able to really it, they can probably effectively block that out from cards in their hands so that is totally just a, a, a nice kadachi build here i think we're trying to get a trigger off of maybe the tearing shuko here if we end up making a tiger because if the tiger hits it'll get plus three from or if the yeah when you swing with the tiger tiger will get plus three from the plunder run and then plus two from the tearing shuko so it'll come in for five and if it hits then uh ira gets to draw a card but they get to go ahead and get a snatch there you go so there's a snatch they play that one out there and then that's with the uh the even bigger than that if i recall correctly they get to banish that snatch play the snatch Comes in for seven, go again. Incredibly powerful here again with that seven. And then it did hit, so the plunder run effect and the snatch effect hits. So this is a pretty wild hand here. And another card from Mask of Three Tails. But a D-React, Sigil of Solace, and a Humble with a couple more blues. I think at this point you might want to try cracking the gold. But here comes a Crouching Tiger for two, like I'd said prior. It is going to get another two. Now we're... The life totals are getting kind of close. Shanna doesn't want to keep. Shanna wants to keep a lot more cards in their hand, strictly because they need to pay for those really, really big attacks. Um, but at the end of the day, Shanna also has to preserve life total. And luckily, they have an energy potion on the field, so it'll be a little bit easier for them to play those big attacks. But you want to make sure that you're blocking efficiently. Here comes another humble, being able to go ahead and just block out some of that damage there um, you don't want to lose your hero ability but if you end up losing it i guess it's not the end of the world it's not like you have to take all the specializations outside of your deck or anything like that you pretty much just lose the ira effect uh and shiana's only really been attacking with one card each turn so not really a necessary thing for uh for shiana to worry about but that sigil of solace brought ira back up to seven so now the life totals are Definitely pretty insane here. Golden Sun coming in for seven. Uh, no more gold to destroy on Shiana's end, so it's just a comfortable block. And it looks like we're getting pretty close to Kadachi lock here. So now Shiana's down to one. It's just going to be a nasty bunch of Kadachi lock at this point, because even if everything gets blocked out, you still have one card that will be able to put three damage on the port in two separate instances. And that is the detrimental game plan for Ira in the end game is just keep on poking at your opponent. Just keep on showing a little bit of love with those daggers, cutting the pieces and forcing them to throw cards in front of your daggers. Um, usually this is also the time in which a lot of people tend to disrespect the razor reflex. Razor reflex tends to be kind of disrespected in this route because you never know when it's going to happen, but I do believe that the Razor Reflexes had already been played on Ira's end, so not the end of the world there. A Test of Strength comes out, though, and the Test of Strength actually gives Ira the gold. So it doesn't look like anything Clash-worthy is working out in Shiana's favor here. That It is a nice card to get, especially if you're trying to focus on the Golden Sun as kind of your, your end game here, but right now it's just kind of flailing. You have to hope that there's not a good hand for Ira coming up and that you're just going to keep on effectively blocking and then passing and effectively blocking and passing. But here comes another Hidachi and it's the same song and dance, right? Waiting for an opening. Ira's waiting for an opening to get some additional damage in here with a full hand. It's very, very nice, uh, but you want to keep hitting with these breakpoints of one. So that way you're not utilizing some of your big attacks later. 
All righty. So there you go. It's just a pass again. We're going to go ahead and come in with another Kadachi. We're going to wait for our opponent. And they go ahead and they just give Ira the win there. Well, that was game one. As expected, Ira tends to do pretty well into most heroes, especially into heroes that only care about having large attacks. Uh, luckily with Shiana, the arcane damage that is presented sometimes with Lesson and Lava is really, really good. And as we saw in the prior little thing there, uh, there was a Lessons in Lava drawn for Shiana. So easily that could have been game if they were able to play that card. But uh, there was just too much aggression on Iris End for nearly no resources. And it's constant aggression. You know, when you're pitching a card to come in with two attacks, you're making it so you're going to win a fatigue match for sure. So unfortunate to see that Shiana ended up being taken down by Ira. But now that means that we get to see Ira move off and Theo is going to end up using Icelander in their next game as the top four of the Parth of Mistvale Clash Bash season continues. So if you want to go ahead and watch that, stay tuned, subscribe here to the hub. We go ahead and we make sure that all of our Clash content that is for these Clash leagues end up being posted here. So if you have not already, please make sure to subscribe here. Also, like the videos if you haven't already. You can even go ahead and follow me on my channel, Ashen Wings TCG, right here if you haven't seen it. Uh, and easily, you can go ahead and find more Clash content there as well. As a member of the committee, I also like to talk about Clash on my channel. So if you wanted to go ahead and join me there, feel free. But stick around here at the Clash Hub, where we're going to see how these next games pan out as we continue in the top four of our Part the Mistvale Clash Bash season. We'll see you then.